FA Cup semi-final day here at Villa Park on ESPN with a classic North against South encounter. Middlesbrough taking on West Ham United. For the victors, the grand prize, a place in the FA Cup final for the losers. Well, nobody remembers semi-final losers. Welcome to our coverage. I'm Adrian Healy, joined by Dave Roberts in the commentary booth. And Dave, uh, both sides already know who the uh, potential uh, opposition are, with Liverpool having beaten Chelsea yesterday. They do indeed, and uh, dare I say it, probably the um, the more the more the team you would more want in a final than Chelsea. Chelsea can turn it on such momentous occasions, and Liverpool 2-1 winners over Chelsea, and. Uh, now they had to defend at the late stages of the game, but they did it well. And as you can see, their confirmation goals from Risa Luis Garcia and uh, Drogba for Chelsea. Yes, two cracking strikes, uh, the Norwegian and the Spaniard for Middlesbrough. Well, it's been a story of replays. They've needed them on three occasions in the run-up to this semi-final, most recently in that classic quarter-final replay against Charlton. We'll bring you all the team news and take you through to the first half kickoff. It's FA Cup semi-final day from Villa Park. Welcome back to Villa Park. The FA reverting to the classic formula for semi-finals, really. Both games played at neutral venues. Old Trafford yesterday. Villa Park in Birmingham today. It's Middlesbrough against West Ham. Mike Riley will be the man in the middle. Adrian Healy joined by Dave Roberts. And uh, for Middlesbrough, well, Gareth Southgate won his late battle for fitness and is included. Losing that battle for fitness was Mark Viduka today. Yeah, he's uh, been trying to get back uh, for at least one of the semi-finals. He's still got the European semi-final to come later, but missed this one out. For West Ham, perhaps the big surprise, the selection of uh, James Collins, the 22-year-old uh, will play and right back. He was preferred to Lionel Scaloni in that position. Well, many changes. that These two met in a dress rehearsal for this game just a few days ago in the uh, English Premier League. Middlesbrough have made seven changes to that side. Uh, far too many to go through. Four changes for West Ham United coming in. Anton Ferdinand, uh, Dean Ashton up front, Matthew Etherington, of course, and Yossi Benayou. There's going to be a moment of silence before this semi-final. This is for the uh, recently uh, departed John Lyle, the great West Ham manager who was in charge for 15 years who passed away earlier this week and brought them two FA Cup victories of course in his time uh, 75 and 81, uh, 1980 John Lyle much missed by the club major part of the club as well So the West Ham players break rank, a tribute to John Lyle. You saw, saw the banners for Ron and John. Uh, Alan Pardew, the, national, the uh, natural successor to those two great West Ham men, trying to take the Hammers back to an FA Cup final for the first time in 26 years. Middlesbrough were there more recently. They were there in 1997. It was a losing trip to Wembley for them on that occasion. They will... Uh, be taking part in just their third FA Cup semi-final in their long history this afternoon. And they lost that game after 42 seconds against Chelsea. That was there at Wembley. West Roberto Di Matteo with a goal on 42 seconds. I think it has gone down as the fastest goal in FA Cup final history. West Ham in their changed lighter strip. Picking from right to left. Be trying to erase the memories of their last trip to Villa Park in an FA Cup semi final. It came in 1991, where they lost uh, in rather horrendous fashion to Nottingham Forest 4 0, the final score on that occasion. And they've, uh, they've been there twice, and they're still to win a semi final of the FA Cup at Villa Park. The other one being a draw, which they won in the replay at Stamford Bridge. As for Middlesbrough, they've got some players out there who'll be. Uh, fully aware of what conditions are like at Villa Park. Gareth Southgate could be key for Middlesbrough. He's returned after injury and uh, he's played in four semi-finals but of course he and George Botang, ex-Villa players. Yes, Steve McLaren has certainly uh, plundered the weaponry here at Villa Park over the years. These two sides uh, 
Both mid-table teams have had uh, differing sorts of seasons in the Premiership. West Ham perhaps exceeding all expectations. Many people considering them as relegation fodder after they came up via the playoffs last season. Well, like, like Wigan, they'll, they'll be delighted with 10th place, which is where they're currently sitting. Middlesbrough, after a disappointing middle part of the season, have really got their act together over the last couple of months. Still chasing honours on two fronts. And making a first foray into West Ham territory here. The ball played behind Yakubo. It's Yakubo and Hasselbank up front today for Steve McLaren in the absence of Mark Viduka. Likewise, uh, Dean Ashton and Marlon Harewood, the preferred striking partnership for Alan Pardew. Yeah, no Teddy Sheringham. But uh, this is a huge game, more than just being a semi-final of the FA Cup, because the winner of this game automatically gets their berth into the UEFA Cup next season. Because the fact uh, Liverpool are in there in the final, they knew that before the first semi-final 24 hours ago, because it was a Chelsea-Liverpool battle and they'd qualify through the league placings for Europe. Middlesbrough astonishingly playing their 58th game of what has already been a marathon season for them. There could be eight more games yet if they make it to uh, both the finals that are still available to them. I was talking to Mark Schwartz yesterday on the telephone and uh, he doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Uh, trying to arrange uh, to sit him down for a quick interview next week for ESPN and he was saying, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, never mind what I'm doing next week. Fortunately, he said, yes, we'll fit you in somewhere. This is an early foray forward on the near side. Stuart Parnaby has set up a shooting chance for Roger Beck, who uh, hooked it wide. Well, he's not the cleanest striker of a ball, Roger Beck. And uh, on this occasion, living up to that billing, the white boots soiled slightly off centre. Well, he scored a crash for a winning 4 2 on the night. Shaka Hislop, 37 year old. With a World Cup summer to look forward to for Trinidad and Tobago. Will he get to play in one more FA Cup final? He was uh, on the bench back in 1998 for Newcastle United. It's his second spell at West Ham as well. Tremendous amount of experience, Hislop. And it's games like this where experience counts. And Middlesbrough do have a few youngsters in their side. Given the potency of both attacks, you imagine it might be a busy afternoon for both goalkeepers who have been in excellent form recently, particularly Mark Schwarzer, who almost single-handedly kept Middlesbrough in their UEFA Cup semi-final against Stour Bucharest on Thursday. Just the one went, be went past him, but some cracking saves kept Middlesbrough alive in that tie. 1-0, they've got a claw back, which uh, when you bear in mind what they did in the round previous, Going into the game 2-0 down, conceding an early goal at home, 3-0 down. They came back to win the tie 4-1 and go through 4-3 in aggregate. James Collins amongst those uh, making his way forward for this uh, free kick. And John Ferdinand joining him. Lighted in by Koncheski, but uh, easy pickings for Mark Schwarzer. He was on the bench the last time Middlesbrough made the FA Cup final back in 1997. He'd only just joined them from Bradford and was cup tied. I'll ask you who was the starting goalkeeper in just a moment, Dave, because Yakubo is on the march here. Prodding it back to Downing. Promising this for Middlesbrough. Deep cross. Finds his man. But Hasselbank's header might have been drifting just wide. It was blocked in any case. Was that handball? It was. West Ham breathing a sigh of relief. The answer to your question, Ben Roberts, part of the Roberts family, but no relation. Youngster. I was going to ask you that. Beaten after 42 seconds. Not the best introduction to his first ever experience at Wembley. As you can see, the, hand, the header from Hasselbank might just have been creeping wide of that far post before Gavidon's intervention. Downing's so dangerous on the left-hand side. He loves to run at players. Struggled with injury that part of the way through this season. Came back and wasn't the same player as got him his England place last season. But we've just seen with, uh, with Downing in the last three or four games he's played, he's coming back to his best on the left-hand side. Dean Ashton cushioning it down. And he's been a revelation since his uh, move from Norwich. 
Two goals for Dean Ashton in West Ham's quarter-final win, which is against Manchester City. Yeah, he started out a crew, which uh, over the years has produced some wonderful players. It's a Crew Alexander in the lower leagues. You know, can't make money really. They've got to rely on bringing young players through. Well, already, Stuart Downing is proving to be a real handful for West Ham. On the left side has the ability to uh, drift into seams and pockets of space. This is Rochen back again. And Shaka Hislop needing two bites of the cherry to gather it. Well, West Ham are in danger on the left-hand side. We've seen two occasions just in the past couple of minutes where Middlesbrough have uh, had a little foray down the left-hand side. Downing is a dangerous player. And uh, James Collins is going to be busy, you feel, throughout the, uh, throughout the afternoon. Gareth Southgate and uh, Chris Riggett, the central defensive pairing. Really the first choice central defensive pairing recently for Steve McLaren. Fed down the line. It was Anton Ferdinand, younger brother of Rio. Now wears the same shirt number as his brother as well. Downing. Yakubu back to George Boateng. As Dave mentioned, a number of those will be more than familiar with this territory, Villa Park. Stuart Downing, you were mentioning his uh, progress into the England ranks as he's involved here again. He actually made his England debut right here at Villa Park against Holland back in February of 2005. There are the available substitutes, Massimo Macaroni and Ray Parler. And another man, ex-Villa man, Ekiog, of course, Ugo Ekiog. So a lot of experience on the Middlesbrough bench. Picked up by Parnaby. It's fiercely competitive in the middle of the park. As you'd expect. Good work from Benayoun to find Koncheski. Now Matthew Etherington. Cutting in field. And Boateng. And his uh, position worked out to perfection. And finds Yakubo as well with the outlet pass. Boateng again. Once again, Middlesbrough have been very efficient in their approach play. Stuart Downing with the shot this time. And West Ham substitutes include Lionel Scaloni, Teddy Sheringham and Bobby Zamora if they need goals as the game progresses. If they need to shore it up, Scaloni, known as the bull, can come on and uh, get a little bit feisty. West Ham's cup run has seen them uh, see off... Uh, Northern opposition in the likes of Blackburn, Bolton and Manchester City. For Middlesbrough, well, it was a non-eaten borough in the third round. They needed a replay to get past them. Likewise against Coventry City in the fourth round and then Preston and Charlton leading to this semi-final spot. They've been architects to their own downfall as regarding the number of games that they have to play. Successful in the UEFA Cup which means it's two legs every all the way. And only one game in the FA Cup where they've not needed the replay. Yes, it's their 24th Cup tie of the season. It's their 30th game since the turn of the new year. Since January the 1st, it's their 30th game. And that could tell. That could tell in the latter stages of the game. We've already seen the both sides now, you know, none of them really having a tentative approach to this one. Middlesbrough have had a, a, three good efforts on target. West Ham have come forward, Etherington with the run earlier. So it's not going to be a defensive game, that's for sure. And certainly Middlesbrough perhaps enjoying the lion's share of the possession through the first ten minutes or so. They have it again in a promising position. And they have a player down. You can clearly see just out of your screen now. Of course, uh, stoppages for players down, very much hitting the headlines this week after the uh, Arsenal Spurs North London derby yesterday. Stuart Downing has gone down. 
Just feeling Nigel Riokoka's leg in the challenge. Will he be part of Sven Joran Eriksson's plans for Germany this summer? Still remains to be seen. To be honest, I don't think so. Simply because of the injuries which uh, has robbed him of quite a lot of this season. And are we looking at Sven Joran Eriksson's potential successor? Well, he's his number two. He'll be there as uh, Sven's assistant. FA uh, saying they're going to uh, announce something this week. Well, he's the likely candidates are slowly disappearing. Was Hiddink is out of the picture now. He's taken the Russia job. Yes, Luis Felipe Scolari appears to be the only foreign manager still in contention. Maybe the safe option for the English FA. They could, of course, appoint Steve McLaren and what about continu uh, con continuity being important? Carry on West Van Joren Eriksson leaves off. Well, it was interesting to hear Gareth Southgate uh, speaking quite publicly that he thought Steve McLaren was not ready for the England manager's job. Said he would be in four years' time. Didn't think any of the English candidates. Bit of off-the-ball stuff here. Mike Riley's got to sort out. It was a kick, and Rochenbach reacted with a, an outstretched arm. And I think Mike Riley will take the sensible approach, which is to say, look, this is an important game, guys. You want to carry on and play. Just Ma sort yourselves out. Matthew Etherington, the West Ham player, involved. Everton taking uh, exception to Rochenbach's close attentions. Player removed from uh, Spurs with uh, Freddie Canute going in the opposite direction at the time, back in. Could have changed the ball. <laughs> Spanish football coming up later on today. Real Madrid need the points badly in their hunt for the uh, second place and automatic. Champions League qualification in Primera, they'll take on Malaga at the Bernabeu. Now West Ham with a rare foray forward in the opening exchanges. Marlon Harewood didn't really hit the shot with much conviction. West Ham's leading scorer in the Premiership with 14. Both sides have had a little test of each other, and uh, now the first signs that it might settle into uh, more of an English English Premier League style game, rather than the cut and thrust of a cup final, a cup semi final. Everington playing the ball invitingly across the edge of the area. Yes, there's been plenty of space out there in the early exchanges, and it continues to be in evidence as Middlesbrough make their foot way forward once again down the left. Time Ferdinand across to disrupt the build-up. So often semi-finals can be uh, tight, tense and cagey affairs. Wasn't really the case yesterday and the early signs are. It's not going to be the case today. Certainly the st statistics, Dave, point to uh, goals. Yeah, they do. Only four, four ties previously between these two clubs have ended goalless. That's right the way back through the history of, uh, of both football clubs. And Middlesbrough, you might think, have the psycholo psychological advantage because of their 2-0 victory just a handful of days ago in the, uh, the league encounter between these two. But West Ham did win 2-1 at Upton Park earlier in the season. What we are looking at is the two Premiership teams who have been involved in more goals than any other side this season. Middlesbrough, well, there have been 102 goals in their 34 Premiership games. It's an average of three a game. It's the highest average in the Premiership. Second to them are West Ham. Alan Pardew, you can see that. Just having a, a chat in the early stages. A lot of acclaim has been passed his way over the past few weeks for the way West Ham have settled in the Premiership. He was under criticism, a bit of pressure from the fans last year. But he had to sell players for the club to uh, carry on their normal business. Yes side that's been almost completely re-engineered re and saw them in a cup final def uh, rather cup fourth round cup defeat against Sheffield United last year very different side just over a year ago climbing at the far post by Ferdinand West Ham who finished sixth in the championship 
came up via the playoffs, winning that playoff final at the Millennium Stadium against Preston. Experienced referee Mike Riley. Took the sensible approach five minutes ago when Etherington and Rochin back uh, squared up to each other. Boateng helping it on. David Arm was there first and was uh, fouled in the process by Yakubu. 19 goals in all competitions for Yakubu. What a bargain he's beginning to look. Signing for uh, the equivalent of just over £7 million from Portsmouth. And there were a lot of question marks when he was signed. A lot of people on Teesside, home of Middlesbrough, were asking the question whether he would repeat the goal-scoring feats. Did he not score four against Middlesbrough in the last game of the season before they then went and signed him? I think he did. That's right. For Portsmouth. That'll catch an opposing manager's eye if nothing else does. <laughs> Another example of that with Middlesbrough was um, Brian Dean for Leeds United scored the goal that put Middlesbrough down when they were relegated the season when they got to two cup finals and were relegated. And he went and signed for Middlesbrough. Attempted cross blocked once again by Ferdinand, who's been uh, busy on the uh, right-hand flank of the West Ham defence. Late challenge. When the ball falls to Downing on the, uh, the far side, Middlesbrough might have wanted an advantage to be played, but Mike Riley's going to show the first yellow card of the game to Rio Coca for the challenge. It was a late challenge, and I think Riley just wants to uh, stamp his authority on the game. There is Downing. Clip late by Co Rio Coca. Well, Rio Coco has been given uh, the nickname, if you will, as the new Paul Ince. And uh, Yellow Cards <laughs> was uh, something that Paul Ince was no stranger to. So now Fabio Rochenbach, who uh, tried his trade with Sporting Lisbon and prior to that with Barcelona. 25 year old Brazilian. Look to test Shaka Hislop from this sort of range. It's a tight angle for him. All along the ground and right into the four-man wall. I did mention he um, he doesn't catch the ball as cleanly as he'd like. When he does, it's quite spectacular as we've seen in previous weeks. But quite a lot of the time, he does waste situations by not making clean contact. Stepping in quickly was Ferdinand to nick it away. The chase is on for Marlon Harewood, and he's going to win that chase. Harewood to the byline, and he earns West Ham their first corner. He was certainly the quicker, quicker of the two players to the ball. Marlon Harewood signed from Nottingham Forest back in November of 2003. corner looking for Ferdinand at the edge of the area Koncheski only half away and the ball will not come down it's a, a game of head tennis and a dangerous one for Middlesbrough to be playing eventually they're able to relieve the pressure well it's the first real spell of pressure that West Ham have created it's taken 20 minutes for them they've had rare forays forwards but uh, that was sustained pressure and uh, Middlesbrough showing signs that they couldn't get the ball clear, get, get the ball away clearly. Not a spare seat in the house, as you might imagine, here at Villa Park. Dean Ashton, just uh, too strong for Rio Coco to corral. But undoubtedly, the best spell of the game so far for the Hammers. This is Dean Ashton. Squares the ball across the six-yard box. Southgate was there. Each club getting 18,000 tickets for this game. As you say, sold out relatively quickly. As you'd expect for an FA Cup semi-final. Well, the 
FA experimented with playing both semi-finals at the Millennium Stadium last year. And it was an experiment that really failed. Neither semi-final was close to sold out. So they went back to the more traditional format of employing league grounds. Rio Coker's got to be careful. He's picked up a yellow card just a couple of minutes ago. He's arguing with Mike Riley. Over what? I don't know. Because he got the free kick. Which Koncheski will dispatch towards the middle of the penalty area. James Collins was closest to latching onto it. Collins who moved with Danny Gabidon from Cardiff City over the summer. Alan Pardew is only the 10th manager in 106 years of West Ham history. Yeah, it's a club with a great tradition of keeping hold of their managers. Not panicking when things go wrong. And you can say the same about Middlesbrough over recent years. Yeah. Only three real managers in the last 15 for them. Four if you count Terry Venables in his brief time in charge. What's interesting to note from Middlesbrough is they've made a switch, they've made a tactical switch. Stuart Downing started on the left, Andrew Taylor started on the right, and in the last ten minutes they've switched the two over. So, uh, Downing on the right, and Taylor now on the left. The Frenchman, Quadru, will make his way forward for this corner. Downing dispatching it. Oh, it was inviting. No one really attacking the ball in a red shirt. And West Ham, as a result, escape. And he's excellent in the air, Quadru. Scored many, many goals from corners and... Uh, free kick situations with his head you may look at the likes of Chris Riggett and Gareth Southgate as uh, two would because of their height would uh, dominate in the penalty area Kudrew's often overlooked flick on from Ashton beyond the range of Marlon Harewood and what a season it's turned out to be for Mark Schwarzer who at one stage uh, wanted away from Middlesbrough it appeared shortly after Australia had qualified for the World Cup via that uh, enthralling playoff win. It's Uruguay, Schwarzer, saying he wanted a different club. He had a fallout with uh, Steve McLaren. Steve McLaren not happy with one of, dis one of his displays and publicly told Schwarzer that, and Schwarzer didn't like the way it was told. And did put in a, a written transfer request which was accepted. But the two parties got themselves together, sorted that out, and Schwarzer withdrew the... Uh, the transfer request and uh, he's still at Middlesbrough and of course he's June July going to Germany with Australia oh it's an interesting ball for Yakubu but uh, the touch has uh, deserted the Nigerian early on here a couple of times he's been in that sort of position and a unable to produce anything really positive well the first 15 minutes belonged to Middlesbrough they were pushing more they had more possession but West Ham have come back into this now I had the feeling before the game started it was going to be tight. Just one goal is going to sort, sort this, tier, this one out between the two of them. Despite the history of goals. And it's looking that way. Well, they're the top two scoring teams outside of the top five in the Premiership. As we mentioned, West Ham in 10th place, Middlesbrough in 13th. Six points between the two of them. But in the FA Cup, points and league placings count for absolutely nothing. It's the beauty of the competition. Liverpool awaiting on May the 13th in Cardiff. And a place in Europe awaiting the victors tonight. Be a robust challenge for Matthew Etherington. Simply no way through for Marlon Harewood. One of the many products of the Middlesbrough Academy, Stuart Downing. Uh, Stuart Downing, Stuart Parnaby, Andrew Taylor, and a lot more youngsters to come. Rio Coca, he's found Benny Ewan here. You'll see Benny Ewan's cross. He instinctively uh, hooked it back across the face of goal, looking for Dean Ashton. Well, Middlesbrough appealing for uh, an offside, but it's Frank Cadrew who dropped back deep. Very, very close call. Almost caught out. And it's 
the West Ham fans turn to make the more noise at the moment as uh, their side. I think Maguire is going to have a word with Hayden Mullins. Just tell him to calm it down. James Collins is uh, marshalled at the moment by Gareth Southgate. As the corner arrives. Oh, Schwarter was struggling to get there. He was impeded. Yeah. Quite clearly. And Middlesbrough actually mentioned this to Mike Riley previously. West Ham adopting the tactic of just standing a man in front of the goalkeeper with the sole intention to stop the goalkeeper coming out. When you've got the likes of uh, Anton Ferdinand who can come forward in these situations, then why not? I think Harewood might be claiming that uh, he was just standing there. <laughs> Two managers who know each other very well in an embrace. Both of them beginning uh, bidding to become the first English manager to win the FA Cup since Joe Royal in 1995. He guided Everton to victory over Manchester United. And that trend continues in the Premiership as well. And yet it seems England have to have an English boss. <laughs> Crazy. Said as an Englishman. Don't care who it is, as long as it's somebody good enough to win them the World Cup, which they won't do this year. There's my prediction early. Duly noted. Well, conversation now between Alan Pardew and Mike Riley. I'm not sure uh, what the bone of contention is. Is it the full 10 yards? Seems to be the issue of the the moment now it is Hit from distance by Hasselbank in the end but it depends how big Mike Riley's steps were whether it was the full 10 yards or not I think Hasselbank's claiming it still wasn't oh, Shaka Hislop might have pulled something in clearing that ball He's a huge goalkeeper, Shaka Hislop, and he's in trouble. He's down again on the floor. Seems to be moving too freely as Koncheski finds Harewood. Now Dean Ashton. Benny Yoon with Rio Coca in front of him. Tries to slip it through to Rio Coca, who does get the final foot in. West Ham moving right down the middle against Middlesbrough. Southgate with his customary sidestep. Well, now Gareth Southgate would love to get back to another cup final at the age of 35. He played for uh, Ashton Villa in the 2000 final, losing effort against Chelsea. He's played in four semi-finals and managed to win only one. This is promising for Middlesbrough. shooting option was the one taken in the end and perhaps not the right one with the overlap offered by Stuart Downing but still Borough have it Downing's ball to the near post Yukubu and Hasselbank denied this time by James Collins it's that switch, that tactical switch that's come switching Downing and Taylor Steve McLaren obviously feeling uh, Downing will be better suited towards the right-hand side, running at Koncheski. Don't know why. He seemed to be uh, getting the measure of Collins in the early stages. Southgate and Rigic to lend their height to the attack. For this uh, Stuart Downing provided corner. Oh, and the flick on arrived. No striker around and... It's a crime from centre-forwards not to be around the six-yard box when any flick-on could put the ball towards you. The nod down for Quadru. Rotchen back for Middlesbrough. Force wide, does well to keep the attack alive. It's squared towards Hasselbank and hooked away. West Ham on the ropes at the moment. Pressure's back on at the opposite end. West Ham enjoyed ten-minute spell, but Middlesbrough now coming back, applying their bit of pressure. 
forever dangerous. Whenever Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank's in the penalty area and the ball is arrowing towards him. As it is once more. Retrieved by Boateng. Some dancing, which isn't fooling anyone at the moment. Southgate had stayed forward. I think it was Southgate's initial flick from the first corner that uh, went uh, unnoticed and untouched across the face of the six-yard box. The ebb and flow of this FA Cup semi-final. Both sides enjoying their periods of ascendancy. Neither side able to make it count yet. Middlesbrough looking to win just the second trophy in their 130-year history. They finally lifted the trophy of the 2004 Carling Cup win against Bolton. After 128 years, they'd never go through to a cup final. They had three successive cup finals in the space of 11 months. Lost all three, and finally, as you say, they picked up some silverware against Bolton. It'll be uh, Quadru with a free kick and a decent one too. Abidon able to clear the danger. Well, Parnaby claimed the corner. I think he's got a case. It certainly was a pinball between the two of them, wasn't it? Parnaby and Edrington. Near post delivery, Quadro over the top. He had a clean, unchallenged header and couldn't keep it down. I mentioned him before in these situations. Maybe the ball just a little bit behind him. He just couldn't get above the flight of the ball. Aim it downwards. That's how close the Middlesbrough fans came to celebrating. The best opportunity of the game so far falling to the Frenchman who played in Middlesbrough's last semi final, which was against Arsenal back in the 2001 season. They lost to an own goal on that occasion. Downing leading the charge once more. Ross took a little deflection, wasn't falling Danny Gabidon. But it certainly is Middlesbrough are uh, pushing now, ending this first half on the attack. West Ham under pressure. The likes of Gabidon and Ferdinand are going to be crucial to West Ham at this stage. Steve McLaren approaching five years in charge at the Riverside. His anniversary will be this June. Cuba coming from an offside position when the ball was played. Players don't, and fans don't, accept those decisions. It's everybody looks at the player when the ball falls towards him, but uh, Cuba, when the ball was played, behind his defender, then ran forward to collect. Oh, Shaka Hislop seems to have uh, shrugged off whatever was ailing him. Send off against uh, Middlesbrough in 1999, actually, Shaka. Sure, he'll not be wanting to see a repeat of that. Certainly signs that middles were getting the advantage now, getting the upper hand. Parnaby, though, contriving to give the ball away to Hayden Mullins. He hasn't seen too much of it so far. Yossi Van Oon will switch it wide. working Middlesbrough midfield who have closed down the spaces once again and won the ball back Yakubu and Hasselbank once again though it's offside against Yakubu Dave Babsky the linesman assistant referees we should call them spot on with that decision Koncheski allowed to approach the penalty area and delivered a bending Inviting ball.
Great ball. Behind the defence. Can only be to the advantage of the strikers if somebody can time their run correctly, which they didn't. The lunge of Rio Coca was the closest to connecting. Now, can someone connect from the corner? Deep, deep delivery. Schwarzer was hit as he came for it by Dean Ashton. Frank Drew having words. It's the Australian goalkeeper who's uh, come off the worst from this duel. Forearm smash would have gone down in a wrestling tournament. So a brief respite. In the action, don't forget Sports Centre every evening here on ESPN. All the news and views, results and reactions from around the world. I wonder what Alan Pardew's message to uh, Anton Ferdinand and company is at the moment. I think he's asking Ferdinand to, to pass the word around. He needs more from his players. He saw Middlesbrough with a bright start. West Ham came back into it for 10 or 15 minutes. But Middlesbrough finishing the stronger of the two. And I think he's just a little bit concerned. This is a real worry for Middlesbrough with Mark Schwarzer still receiving attention. Brad Jones, the Middlesbrough reserve goalkeeper. Another Australian. He has seen uh, plenty of action in uh, the Premiership this season. Schwarzer has had a run of injuries, which has uh, deprived him of uh, a decent number of games. Steve McLaren readying his uh, half-time notes. It was Brian Robson who led Middlesbrough to their last FA Cup final. And their only previous FA Cup final in 1997. Well, this is the challenge from Ashton. He's certainly gone in with his arm high. Whether there was any intent by him to, uh, to hurt Schwarzer. But certainly every intent for his arm to go across and uh, disrupt the goalkeeper as he was coming out to gather the clearance. And it's taken an awful lot of time for treatment. What Middlesbrough wouldn't want to do now is lose a goalkeeper of the quality of uh, Mark Schwarzer. Brad Jones is uh, a capable young goalkeeper. But in this situation, you need the experience is what Schwarzer can give. Bradley Jones awaiting the call, should it indeed come, as they attempt to uh, fix Mark Schwarzer. It looked to be the jaw area that... Uh, uh, most bothering the Australian. I don't think I, I don't think the call will come. I think you'll see Schwarzer back on his feet, uh, as we see now. Brad Jones warming up, yes, just in preparation. You don't know what's going to happen with Schwarzer over the next 10-15 minutes. If he takes another whack, then Jones may be called upon. But uh... oh, don't forget the Champions League semi-final second legs this week, right here on ESPN. Villarreal against Arsenal. The Gunners. Leading by Colo Torre's goal in that first leg encounter. Can they make it count as they travel to El Madrigal? Tommy Smith and Derek Ray will bring you that game on Tuesday. And this is a lengthy, lengthy stoppage for which, Mark Schwartz's injury. Which is the only time when a referee will uh, not call a stretcher on. Got to play with a goalkeeper. So he can take as much time as he wants to recover the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. He's got the free kick, and it looks like the decision's been made to bring him off. So Brad Jones is going to come on after lengthy treatment, many, many checks and tests. Schwartz has been forced to, uh, to, to leave the semi-final. <laughs> 33-year-old doesn't like it. He doesn't like the decision. Steve McLaren obviously uh, taking no chances. So Bradley Jones it is. One Australian for another. Keeper who was signed from uh, Australian side Bayswater. All the way back in uh, August of 2000. He was loaned out when he was at Middlesbrough. Stockport, Rotherham, Blackpool, temporary homes. The 24-year-old replacing that 33-year-old. 
making just the 40th appearance of his uh, English career to date. And the 19th in a Middlesbrough shirt. So back underway inside the final five minutes of the first half, which will probably see considerable stoppage time now. It's hard not to argue that Middlesbrough have had the best of the first half exchanges without carving out any golden opportunity, save for the one header from Frank Quadru, which she put over the top. Kubu and Hasselbank perhaps not quite clicking together, Dave. No, and uh, they haven't all season, to be fair. Well, it almost fell for Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, courtesy of a West Ham deflection. You've seen Mark Viduki used quite a bit by Middlesbrough as well. Uh, Steve McLaren has rotated his front line. Well, the three of them have all uh, been in the goals, scored goals aplenty. Kubu with 19 on the season, Hasselbank with 18. Hasselbank's been the man in form recently, 14 in his last 20 in all competitions. But it's West Ham on the front foot here. Dean Ashton's initial header still up for grabs. And the shot over the top from Yossi Benayoun. The Israeli couldn't keep it down. Ball just wouldn't drop for him. Rising all the time. West Ham's first attempt, direct attempt on Middlesbrough's goal. And Benayoun would like that to have, uh, to have been sitting six inches lower, I'm sure. The Israeli signed from Racing of Santander. It's been a real hit at Upton Park as uh, George Botang is the latest to feel the pain. And it's another head injury. And this will be worrying for Middlesbrough. Botang uh, really has been the engine room in midfield. Closes down opportunities, works hard, keeps possession of the ball. Very, very tough player. It's going to take something for him to leave this field. He had an interesting afternoon recently, didn't he, in the... Uh, Time tease Derby scoring at both ends <laughs> against Newcastle. That's one way to make up for an own goal is go, go down the other end and score. But he caught an elbow. And he's needing treatment also. So a full blooded physical, typically English affair, as you might expect. In a cup semi final played in the Midlands between north and south but an Australian and a Dutchman who felt the full English force of the cup semi-final Boateng will uh, make his way to the sidelines to try and shake it off 30 year old 30 year old now the uh, man known as the boat himself uh, floating again former player of the year voted by the fans of course at Middlesbrough five minutes to be added a fairly good indication of uh, how the first half has gone Boateng quickly back on Yakubu, who was wrestled to the ground. Happens quite a lot with Yakubu. Plays with a low centre of gravity. So any touch is going to push him down towards the ground even quicker. So into stoppage time. In the middle for a strike. Rochenbach's free kick is a disappointing one. Again. But they have it back. Floyd Hasselbank with uh, too tough a task to come up with the ball against Danny Gavidon. He uh, made a good fist of it. Yeah, he put the Welsh international under pressure. Just keeps the ball down the far end. West Ham in possession, but the pressure still firmly on Shaka. His lob's goal. Just at times you feel there's been element of quality missing someone who can just put their foot on the ball take their time and, and wait for space to open up Stuart Downing has had some positive moments he's on the move again but his cross met by Hayden Mullins a 
It was typical of Boateng. Took a head injury, big knock on the head. And then straight back into the thick of it in midfield. Got to defend a bit more now. Now, Kincheski has been ever present in the league for West Ham this year. Oh, wonderful dribbling from Etherington. Not past two, but not the third. And then Kincheski can't find him with the resulting loose ball. Bit of a waste by Kincheski. West Ham had just relieved the pressure from one end. Marlon Harewood claiming he uh, forced a touch off Stuart Parnaby that. Chris Riggett. I don't think so. Ever the pro claiming claiming things that don't that don't sh or shouldn't fall your way. Happens all the time. Makes makes a bit of a nightmare the life of a referee. So just over halfway through the allotted stoppage time. Yakubu back to goal. Holding out for Roger back. Oh, he's done well here. Kills one. But wide of the mark. And he's been the man who's pulled the trigger on most occasions in this first half. For a brief moment, Rochenbach had a, an option outside wider, but he decided to uh, keep hold and have a go with the right foot, try to curl it into the top corner. And he set it out too wide in the onset. Just opened up for him, didn't it? For half a second. A busy first half for Mike Riley. call it a dirty game but uh, keenly contested certainly yeah, a couple of head injuries I think just one yellow card Rio Coker on the 19th minute but you're always going to get a keenly contested semi-final sometimes FA Cup finals can disappoint just trying to think back to the last semi-final that disappointed Yakubu from long range always rising over Shaka Hislop's bar Both semi-finals last year were decidedly uh, one-sided affairs. As we look at Yakubu's effort, Manchester United walloping Newcastle United. Arsenal uh, fairly comfortable against Blackburn. There's everything to win in a semi-final. It's a place in the final. But once you get there, there's everything to lose. That can be the uh, the difference between performance levels. Last minute of stoppage time. For those of you just joining us, we're not into the second half. We're still in the first half here. Downing. Alongside Taylor. Hasselbank is furious. He's absolutely furious. Created a little bit of space for himself, wanted a ball played to him, and was completely ignored. So still we await the breakthrough in this second FA Cup semi-final. Goalless it is between Middlesbrough and West Ham United. Frank Quadru perhaps with the best opportunity of the first half. A header from the corner that sailed over the bar. Nil-nil will show you all the action from yesterday's semi-final between Chelsea and Liverpool next. All the attention today in England focused squarely on Villa Park. Middlesbrough nil, West Ham nil at half-time in this second semi-final in the FA Cup. The first semi-final, of course, coming yesterday. That game played at Old Trafford. And Liverpool doing it to Chelsea once again. John Arna Risa giving them the perfect platform after 21 minutes. And then what a cracking second goal from Luis Garcia. Oh, fantastic. Uh, the customary sucking of the thumb celebration. And at this point, you think, oh, Liverpool are through. But you can't rule out Chelsea, can you? Oh, 2 0 down with 20 minutes to go. And he produced a, a storming finish, aided by Didier Drogba's goal. And it set up a, a grandstand finale. The question was, could Chelsea conjure up an equaliser? They had one glorious opportunity to do so deep into stoppage time. And Joe Cole, well, he won't want to look at that again. Oh, a fantastic opportunity. That's the Hammers against the Borough here. Middlesbrough nil, West Ham United nil. Two sides looking to join Liverpool in the FA Cup final on May the 13th. Who'll get there? Well, the second half coming up. Villa Park pack to the rafters. They've come down to the northeast. They've come from the east end of London. Nothing to separate the two sides so far. Middlesbrough nil, West Ham nil. And let's have a look back at the. Uh, 
wonderful moments of the first half. Uh, started early with Middlesbrough in the ascendancy and Fabio Rocha back in the thick of the action, Dave. Yeah, Miss Q on this occasion, very early on in the game, just four minutes and, uh, well, it wasn't his first opportunity, as we'll see. It was uh, Hasselbank who was uh, on the scene with not even six minutes gone. His header blocked on route to goal and then uh, Q, the Brazilian once again. Yeah, Rocha back with the white boots. A little fortuitous, but... The shot, shot lacking in uh, power and direction, really. And the next uh, notable chance was perhaps the best of the first half. Frank Quadro, a free header, no challenge, couldn't put it on target. Middlesbrough did have the early play, but West Ham came back into the game. It took 44 minutes before their first real chance in front of goal. Ben Ayun with a shot, but it was always rising. No problem, the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. And uh, Fabio Rocha back, hoping the third time would be a charm. This perhaps the best of his opportunities. He carved it out for himself. The space appeared, but he couldn't bend it round inside the post. Middlesbrough enjoying, uh, well, the lion's share of the shooting in the first half, at least. Uh, look at that. Seven of the eight shots came from Middlesbrough. And the corner kick department fairly even. That's a normally a good indicator of uh, possession. Just the one offside. Just the one booking as well despite a fairly physical first half. So Middlesbrough nil, West Ham nil. Finally poised in the battle to see who will be facing Liverpool on May the 13th. It has to be decided one way or the other this afternoon. We'll be right back. This is the scene at Villa Park. Deadlock between Middlesbrough and West Ham. The side from Teesside perhaps enjoying the better of the first half exchanges, but unable to make it count where it really matters. Counts for nothing. What's gone, what you've missed, it's putting it in the back of the net, as Harry the Hammer will tell you. They're forever blowing bubbles in the east end of London. <laughs> and hitting each other in the head with a hammer, very nice. It's the hammer blow they haven't been able to apply. It was a goal from Dika that was a bit of a blow to Middlesbrough's hope of making the UEFA Cup final. It could have been a lot worse, though, in Romania. It could have been. The man who's been replaced, Mark Schwartz, has gone off injured uh, this afternoon, but uh, in Bucharest, uh, he really kept out three or four good chances for the home side. In the other semi-final, goalless between uh, the German team at FC Schalke and uh, Sevilla of Spain. Yeah, Sevilla will fancy their chances. Uh, obviously, league placings there in the UEFA Cup qualifying placings at the moment as the uh, La Liga comes to a close. Second leg of those UEFA Cup semi-finals to come out this Thursday. And what is uh, a hectic end to the season for Middlesbrough in particular. As we've mentioned, playing their 58th game of the season. Two sides with very different uh, cup histories. Middlesbrough, as we mentioned, had just made the one final back in 1997. West Ham United Oh, they were in the very first Wembley final, what came to be known as the White Horse final. 1923. They lost to Bolton Wanderers. But they've won on the three prior occasions they've made a final. Most recently uh, in 1980, and that was the last time a lower division side won the FA Cup. West Ham United winning uh, against Arsenal with what was uh, known as a rare header from Trevor Brooking. <laughs> It just hit him, he couldn't get out of the way quick enough. Their uh, two finals under John Lyle were both all London affairs, beating Arsenal and then Fulham back in 1975. Of course, the possibility of an all London final disappeared with Chelsea's defeat yesterday. It's Jimmy Walker you're seeing, the goalkeeper, substitute goalkeeper who's warming up, 32 years old. The Champions League will be back on your screens this coming week. We start on Tuesday. Derek Ray and Tommy Smith will bring you all the action from El Madrigal. As Villarreal have it all to do against Arsenal, as do Milan, as they travel a goal down to the new Camp to take on Barcelona. Places in the Paris final at stake. We'll get there. We can see all the drama unfolds right here on ESPN. Check your local listings, as always, wherever you're watching. And we hope you're enjoying our coverage today from Villa Park around the world. Middlesbrough. Pretty much in the driver's seat, Dave Roberts, uh, in the first half. As we showed you the first half highlights. Most of them came from men in red shirts, but uh, none of them really troubled Chaka Hislop. That was the problem. No, nope. the likes of this man, Yukubu, and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, who finished alongside him up front for Middlesbrough in the first half. Need to do a little bit more there is Hasselbank. 
in a rich vein of goal scoring form as you touched on earlier Adrian but the best chance has come from a defender and maybe that just sums up Middlesbrough's first half display plenty of opportunity plenty of hard work in possession but where it counts inside the penalty area maybe just lacking a little it's been a much tougher road to the semi-final for West Ham than it has been for Borough Blackburn, Bolton and Manchester City amongst their prior victims Middlesbrough had to wait until the quarter-final against Charlton to face Premiership opposition and uh, it's a refreshing change for Middlesbrough who've gone out in the past three years to Chelsea Arsenal and Manchester United all of them away ties the interesting thing about these two teams and the, their routes through to the semi-final is there's just one home draw between them Middlesbrough always out of the hat second when it comes to the FA Cup draw they've played away from home in every tie now it's the neutral ground and at West Ham just the one home journey the battle through they have West Ham in their seventh semi-final as I mentioned their only prior meeting in the FA Cup since the First World War was uh, back in 1970 where Middlesbrough as a second division team at the time knocked out top flight West Ham 2-1 they did can't say I remember it well, will this be a day to remember for the fans that have traveled down from the northeast what an astonishing season it's turning out to be for Steve McLaren's men let's not uh, forget that uh, a little over three months ago, Steve McLaren's job appeared to be in some jeopardy with Middlesbrough having just lost 4-0 at home to Aston Villa, seemingly being sucked into a relegation struggle. He was certainly under a lot of pressure and uh, the support base was split on Teesside. It's an early foray forward with a man available on the far side. The cross, though, was disappointing from rushing back. McLaren was certainly under pressure. There, there were calls on the um, radio stations in the Middlesbrough area and letters being written to local newspapers saying it's time for a change, he's done well, but he can't take the team any further forward than he had. What a difference a couple of months make. And the one game that uh, proved to be the real catalyst, Dave, was that 3-0 home win against Chelsea in the league. Well, you've got to bear in mind Middlesbrough in this season. They've beaten Chelsea, Manchester United and Arsenal. All three games at home at the Riverside, but that's what the pro McLaren supporters were pointing to. Boateng rifling it into the midriff of uh, Rochamback, back, and it's uh, West Ham bursting forward with real intent here. Well, some half hearted appeals. The cross eventually arriving, geared towards Ashton. The header away as Middlesbrough were at full stretch. A bright opening, just a minute and a half on the watch. Middlesbrough have already gone down one end to uh, create an opportunity and West Ham pushing forward with some purpose. And I think Rochenbach is in trouble. Mike Riley's going to the back pocket. Roger Rio Coker again was the West Ham player involved. Rochenbach to... Uh, settled in either the new camp or in Lisbon with Sporting twice he used his arm first it was the left and the second which he was punished for was the right and he's certainly not the first Brazilian to make his mark on Teesside is he <laughs> Konczewski leaving the free kick for Benayou there was an infringement in the area James Collins was involved yeah, Middlesbrough flirted quite a bit with uh, world champions. The most, success, the most successful, of course, Juninho. Lifted the uh, League Cup with Middlesbrough before leaving again after the third, third stay on Teesside. But the likes of uh, Branco, who was a World Cup winner in 94 with Brazil, has been there. Doriva's still there, but uh, not of the same stature, shall we say. Yeah, Doriva involved today he wants a new contract he wants to stay on Teesside for one more year he says his contract's over at the end of the season that's a real scrum down for possession and twist hand win and quick to take the restart Harewood whipping around against Southgate it was a positive play from Harewood 
Ferdinand. The ball won't come down, though. And it enables Middlesbrough to be able to clear their lines. Under some pressure here, though. Alan Pardew's work's been done. West Ham the brighter. Benny Yoon. Can't uh, thread a tight ball through a forest of legs. But it's uh, all players encamped in the Middlesbrough half at the moment. Koncheski driving West Ham on. It's an important time now for West Ham. They have the ascendancy. Middlesbrough being forced to give away silly free kicks, as you're seeing there from Chris Riggett. If they can make this, uh, this pressure count, then they're almost through to the final. Koncheski quickly taken free kick. Short Middlesbrough unawares temporarily. It was West Ham in the first 45 minutes, weathering an early storm from Middlesbrough. Now the roles are reversed. you oh, quite latch on to the ball after good work from Hayden Mullins but still Middlesbrough can't get it clear Koncheski going deep delivering the ball towards Ashton well they can pitch a tent and stay there for the rest of the game it looks like West Ham at the moment Riggett and Southgate fully exerted here just a suggestion that uh, there might have been a touch onto the arm of Chris Riggett there. Benny Yoon hurling in the long throw. Drew rising to the task for Middlesbrough. Out comes Bradley Jones. And it was a good decision from the Australian keeper. Middlesbrough just cannot get a foot on the ball at the moment. Now that's where if Mark Schwartz, the Middlesbrough, the original Middlesbrough goalkeeper, has a weakness. He comes out to clear and he doesn't clear effectively. Brad Jones, the youngster, 24 years of age, came out and got some distance on his punch. Looking at Alan Pardew, who uh, knows what it's like to score a winner in a cup semi-final here at Villa Park. He did so for Crystal Palace against Liverpool back in 1990, a game that ended 4-3 to Palace. It was the only FA Cup goal he ever scored as a player. Not a bad one to have. Flicked on by Ashton. Riggett is there once again. And a really impressive uh, campaign has Chris Riggett, ex Derby County player. Took a while to settle in Middlesbrough, giving only fleeting opportunities. But injuries created him an opportunity, and he's, uh, he's certainly taken it and has looked impressive. Hasselbank is the link man. Oh, rushing back again, perhaps uh, rushed the return pass. That's twice he's spoiled to good positional opportunities for Middlesbrough in the second half. And they are a counter-attacking counter side, Middlesbrough. They've used it to great effect this season. All sorts of space opening up. As uh, both midfields, temporarily at least, are being bypassed. Stirring stuff in this second English FA Cup semi-final of the weekend after we saw the aristocrats of English football involved yesterday Chelsea and Liverpool it's much more much more of a mid-table affair in terms of the Premiership I was going to ask you to be kind in your description. I was wondering where you were leading to that after talking about the aristocrats. This is Benny Yu. This is great for West Ham. Middlesbrough showing signs of rocking for the first time in the game. It is concerted pressure by West Ham United for the first time in the game. They had their moments midway through the first half, but they're now penning Middlesbrough back completely it's, it's all white shirts forward I think the only man who isn't forward at the moment Shaka his love the West Ham goalkeeper and they love it whatever Adam Pardew said at half time has certainly worked West Ham passing the ball crisply with pace here's the corner from Ben Ayoun flinging himself full length as Ferdinand to try and latch onto it 
Well, this is where West Ham have to be careful because Middlesbrough are a counter-attacking side. They've played a lot of games this season in the English Premier League, defending with five across the back and then relying on the break from their strikers in midfield. This is Harewood! Well, it wouldn't sit kindly for Marlon Harewood. Rifled one from a full 30 yards. Needed it to dip, but wasn't pretty, was it? Right across the ball. There's only one place that was going to go, and that was Rosette. Marlon Harewood. West Ham's leading scorer this season in the league with 14. He's just gone past uh, 50 goals for the club in all competitions. Collins using the arm but effectively again another needless free kick considered by Middlesbrough West Ham need to use this possession now it's okay putting the pressure on they need to use it because you get the feeling it's not going to last for the full 45 minutes of the second half if Middlesbrough weather the storm from a confidence point of view it could just knock West Ham a little bit they need to make something of it Koncheski again choosing the outside option and that worked out to George Boateng's advantage. Benayoun thought about the quick and short corner, thought better of it. Another in-swinger from the Israeli and a header that clipped the top of the bar from Dean Ashton. He's a handful. Dean Ashton, former Norwich City player. Bradley Jones might claim he had this covered. We shall see. He reminds me of the, um, the no-nonsense sort of centre-forward. Bolton have a couple. Nolan's there, of course, for Bolton. He just muscles his way free of the defender. West Ham's record signing. That's £7 million from Norwich City. Just uh, three goals in the league so far in, for Dean Ashton in the Premiership in ten appearances. A good FA Cup goal scoring record. And he nearly added to it there. But preferred, of course, by Alan Pardew. Teddy Sheringham, some may have seen as the man for the big occasion. Had a little bit of a, a curse on Middlesbrough Sheringham. Came into the game late earlier in the season at Upton Park and uh, scored the goal which set West Ham onto a 2 0 victory, the other one being an own goal. But no. Ashton given the, uh, the nod this time. Yes, the uh, league games between the two teams split of uh, home victories. Both sides have also won previously on trips to Villa Park this season. Both of them away winners against Aston Villa. Middlesbrough 3-2 back in October. West Ham following suit with a 2-1 win here in January. That's a goal kick. That should be a goal kick. Harewood's uh, appeal has won the day. Clearly coming off Harewood. Questions will be asked of the match officials if this one leads to a goal. Now Harewood taking up that position just in front of Bradley Jones as he did with Schwarter in the first half. Benny Yoon working hard, hard to engineer. The angle for a shot, it was Matthew Etherington who'd come across. Scored in the fourth round win against Blackburn, did Matthew Etherington. West Ham need to keep the pressure up now. First signs in the second half that it's their push forwards resulted in nothing. And they may ease off. Perhaps not. Benny Yoon is having a greater and greater influence upon proceedings. Israeli international. Netherington looking to provide him with possession again. Boateng is there first. Well, the pressure's still there. West Ham still doing exactly what Alan Pardew would have asked for. to Rio Coca. Well, you can see that 
expression of angst on George Boateng's face. This is a thorough examination Middlesbrough are being given at the start of the second half. Tables have been turned in the first period. West Ham survived Middlesbrough's period of ascendancy. Everington continuing the examination. The header from Dean Ashton was right at Bradley Jones. I think the Middlesbrough fans will be a little worried. Steve McLaren's going to be a bit worried. It's all right conceding periods of the game when you know your opponents are going to have possession, they're going to apply pressure. Of course they will. It doesn't matter if it's Chelsea playing a non-league club in the FA Cup. But if your team can't respond, you've got to make some changes. And it's been 15 full minutes now that West Ham have had Middlesbrough pen back. Well, Dean Ashton a little static as the ball was played towards him. And Everington... the question was going to be would uh, fatigue play a part in the proceedings for Middlesbrough maybe still early in the proceedings to be talking about that but West Ham's second half superiority is quite extreme I wonder how long Steve McLaren will leave it before just signing. looking, just looking to see what his options are on the bench. He's got a couple of strikers, Massimo Macaroni, one of them. But Ray Paul is the only real midfielder with any experience to call upon. The other's defenders, Uke Ekiog. And obviously Brad Jones, the goalkeeper, has been used. Just being overrun in the middle of the park at the moment. It's the defence. They're saving the day for Middlesbrough. There's another effort comes in, and Bradley Jones was forced to sprawl full length. Neo Coker just uh, wide of the far post. Great opportunity. Rio Coker as well. Uses his body strength, cuts inside, just gives himself a, a yard of space to fire the shot in. If that had hit the outside of the boot as it left him, it would have curled in the... Uh, the, the far post Brad Jones knew it was close he was at full stretch despair for the Hammers fans behind the goal he's a lucky charm for West Ham he's never been on a losing West Ham side in the FA Cup Nigel Rio Coca joined from the club formerly known as Wimbledon <laughs> MK Dons I think it is these days The Ghanaian-born Dutch international, George Boateng, is going to have to leave proceedings, needs some more treatment. Took a bang on the head in the first half. But this is as close as uh, West Ham have come. Ashton's header against the crossbar. I'm sure Brad Jones will claim he had it covered. Yes, from a civil, similar position to the one in which Frank Quadru missed Middlesbrough's best opportunity of the first half, which seems an awful long time ago now. Different sort of game. First 45 minutes. But no damage inflicted yet. And Middlesbrough has worked the ball forward here. It's a decent cross. Hasselbank was arriving. He claims it flicked off the defender last. This is a great game. You're not getting the pretty play. You're not getting the spectacular skills. I think Hasselbank's got a case for a corner. Who's it touched last? Hasselbank goes up for the challenge? No. Ever the hungry striker wanting every decision. I take my words back, it was a goal kick. Yet another head injury here. Gareth Southgate. Quickly up and back at him. Marlon Harewood. Continuing the discussion. That was an elbow that caught Southgate. Quite a number of elbows, have, and they've, they've gone against Middlesbrough at the moment. But Mike Riley's happy to say, look, they're all fair. Nothing's intended. And it was Roaching back who was uh, shown the yellow card for an elbow, Middlesbrough player. Too strong this time. on Ferdinand, quickly closed down. And some high pressure.
departure. Almost paying dividends for Middlesbrough and still might. That's great work by Yakuba. Great work by Yakuba. Can't get a hold of the ball up front. He runs himself into the ground to regain possession. A tackle from behind from Hayden Mullins was a fair one. It's a real blood and thunder encounter now. Alan Harewood frustrated. Frank Gerdou stooped into the challenge, used his head to win the ball back. Harewood went up with a foot. A lot of referees would have said the, uh, the defender's gone down and put his head in the dangerous area rather than the other way around and would have played on, but Mike Riley stopped it, I think. He's a little bit aware of uh, a few injuries coming to the Middlesbrough players. Use of the arm, use of the elbow, not intentionally, but in that case he uh, used the opportunity to give Middlesbrough the free kick. Just hooked away at the last second by Danny Gabidon. As Middlesbrough do appear to have weathered that storm and now come back with a second win themselves. They've won a free kick, Danny Gabidon is distraught. But well, I mentioned earlier that West Ham need to use their ascendancy that they had in this, for, in this second 45 minutes because it'll not last forever. And really they could be left psychologically now thinking we've thrown everything we can at Middlesbrough and they've not cracked. And we are seeing just in the last few minutes now things changing. Middlesbrough coming forward, getting hold of the ball again, West Ham falling backwards. And they're going to have to defend a very dangerous free kick here. There'll be a number of Middlesbrough players fancying the chances. Stuart Downing's left foot, there's Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank with the right foot. It is Downing, goes for the chip. That's a waste, really is a waste. Great opportunity to put pressure on the goal. It appeared he was lining up a, a power free kick rather than a, a delicate placement, but he went for the chip. Bear in mind, he's only 21 years of age. He's been playing in the English Premiership now for coming on to his third third season after being loaned out to North East rival Sunderland just to get him a bit of first team experience but he's still tender years if I was Alan Pardew I'd be a little concerned West Ham have thrown everything at Middlesbrough and they don't have a lead and they now see, you're now seeing the North East side come back into this Rochenbach Barnaby did well the control, and it breaks kindly for the London side. Benayoun to Ashton. Southgate timed his uh, sliding challenge to perfection. Benayoun once more. See no options available for him on the right-hand side. He had to check and go back to the left. That's not what you've seen from West Ham in the first 20 minutes. Minchewski all on the ground this time. West Ham down the same side of the field, the left. Where they have been conducting most of their raids. That's where well Middlesbrough in the first half, for that matter. This is uh, Marlon Harewood. Deep cross towards Ashton. And he got away from Quadru, but in chesting the ball down, put it too far in front of him. Bradley Jones was able to uh, scamper in there and retrieve. Ashton's going to get a yellow card for this, for the challenge. And now tempers really flaring with Hayden Mullins and Frank Quadru in each other's faces. Ashton threw himself feet first towards the face of Brad Jones. The keeper was clearly going to win the challenge. Mike Riley wants to give a yellow card to Dean Ashton. He's going to have a word. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank saying that's not the first time he's done it. Frank Quadru though overreacting to the situation. That's why he's going to get a talking to. I think you'll see Mike Riley just caution the one player, Dean Ashton. He's going to tell Kudrou to behave himself, just saying to him, look, I spotted it, I'm going to caution him. Not the first time, as you can see from Mike Riley. You've done it twice. Yellow card. And Dean Ashton looks for the incident that led to that flare-up, sliding in on Bradley Jones. He'd done the hard part here, controlled it, and in doing so, just offered too much of the ball to Bradley Jones and Gareth Southgate. And both were there in a flash to close the door on Dean Ashton. No nonsense centre forward. 
If he can't score goals, he'll make a nuisance of himself. It'll create an opportunity for somebody else. And now it's Yakubo in a little too robustly. And Ben Ayun. Well, don't blink, you'll miss something. Maybe not goals at the moment. I think we put the curse on that, saying there's only ever been four goalless draws between these two sides in the history of uh, English football. And the two sides that have produced more goals in their Premiership games than any other. They've not produced one in the Cup semi-final so far, and it's increasingly looking like one might well be enough to decide the outcome. through for Etherington could well be a Saturday afternoon English Premier League game couldn't it two sides mid tables three places separating them in the English Premier League the difference this time round, it's not just three points that are at stake, it's a place in the final of the FA Cup on May the 13th in Cardiff to play Liverpool, of course. Also, and I can't emphasise this enough, the winners of this game get a place in the UEFA Cup next season, guaranteed. A tournament in which Middlesbrough is still very much involved this year, of course. Another semi-final to come against our Bucharest on Thursday at the Riverside. They already have a place booked in one final. West Ham trying to make sure that's not the case. Frank Quadru stepping in. That's a good point you've made there, Adrian. The fact if Middlesbrough can secure their place in the final here today, they've got tired legs without a shadow of a doubt. And for them to face Star Book Arrest in the second semi final, the second leg of the uh, UEFA Cup semi final, knowing that place in Cardiff is, is assured, it'll make such a difference. I, re I remember watching Middlesbrough when they lost their only ever FA Cup final appearance to Chelsea. That was the season where they had two final appearances, one in the League Cup, one in the FA Cup, and subsequently they had too many games, they lost both Cup finals and were relegated on the last day of the season against Leeds. And a lot of Middlesbrough fans still say if they'd have won one of the Cups, it would have given them enough of a lift to overcome the exertions of a, a torridly long season. And it appears as though Ray Parler is readying himself for action. Substitution so far was a forced goalkeeping change. Mark Schwartz are being replaced by Bradley Jones towards the end of the first half. I think you might see Andrew Taylor come off. The youngster's uh, 19 years of age. You saw him quite a bit in the first half, switching wings with Stuart Downing, starting out on the right, playing on the left, but you've not seen him recently. Kubo and Hasselbank working in tandem. There was a challenge that flattened Hasselbank on the edge of the area Oops. play on says Mike Riley oh they've done well here Middlesbrough to the byline they go and the attack still very much alive that's why Stuart Downing is a left winger he hasn't got a right foot he has scored with his right foot over the few years he's been in the first team it broke kindly for Downing here, didn't it? On the edge of the area. And time to set his sights. I think the goal he grabbed against Manchester United was a right foot shot, which surprised many. But hey, that's scored with my left occasionally. He's never scored in the FA Cup, Stuart Downing. Not a bad time to open his account, this would be. Harewood controlling the left hand flank but uh, simply no way through against Stuart Parnaby resolute defending from him you've seen a shift in the game we spotted it 10 minutes ago West Ham giving it everything they had but everything they had not quite good enough since then Middlesbrough have really come into the game oh. a lot more composure Boateng, wide to Parnaby, charged down by Koczewski. George Boateng. Deep delivery that eludes everyone inside the West Ham area. 
And Stewart Downing trying to keep the momentum with Middlesbrough. This is Rochenbeck. Not for the first time having a go from distance. Shaka Hislop down smartly to smother. Well, worth a try. Certainly not, not creating anything close range, so uh, have a go from distance. They got one on target this time. Mm. The Middles were wanting the throw, but it's gone West Ham's way. Mike Riley wasn't quite sure. He was still making up ground. He looked at his assistant for help. That couldn't be provided. Harewood trying to uh, latch on to Matthew Etherington's run. No way, so Stuart Parnaby. Recently uh, went past the 100 appearance mark for Middlesbrough. Koncheski. Off the mark with uh, another cross. He's been uh, foraying down that left-hand side with some regularity as you look at uh, Ray Parler. Talk about uh, mm. FA Cup experience. Here's a man who's seen it all and done it all. He's replacing Rochenbach, a man who's uh, played in five FA Cup finals, Parler. It's a straight swap. Steve McLaren's going to keep faith with the youngsters. He combined just a few moments ago to give Stuart Downing his opportunity, which he uh, blazed high and handsomely wide with his right foot, his weaker foot. Parler on the winning side four times for Arsenal as well in cup finals. And scored an FA Cup final goal back in 2002 against Chelsea. Space of plenty once again for Stuart Downing. Yakubo to Hasselbank. But offside. He needed a first time ball. Yakubo decided to take the touch. As you can see, the, the, the touch to control the ball just denied Hasselbank the time he needed. If it afflicted first time, Hasselbank would have still been onside. It's a game that has alternated between uh, fast-paced passing, counter-attacking football at times, and uh, football of a more physical nature. Villarreal against Arsenal. Spain against England in the uh, second leg of that Champions League semi-final from El Madrigal. You can see it on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you're watching, right here on ESPN. Adrian Healy and Dave Roberts with you this afternoon from Villa Park. Nil-nil it remains. Into the final quarter of an hour. And still very little to choose between the sides. It's open. The stage is set for someone to become a superstar. As we said early on, we don't think there'll be much between the two teams, and I think it'll just be one moment of brilliance or a nightmare moment of a, an error at the back that's going to cost them. And what a prize it will cost, over a million pounds in prize money and a place in the UEFA Cup for next season. Tired legs and tired minds at this stage of the game. Who has the greater resiliency, the greater desire? Yakubu. Again, unable to engineer an opening. It's not been his afternoon so far. But it only takes a moment for the Nigerian. He's proved many times. Leading goal scorer in the FA Cup for Middlesbrough with four this season. No nonsense approach from uh, Kadru at the back. Sporting the uh, the head bandage. Equally, the direct approach deployed by West Ham. Ashton's knocked down, and there's the breakthrough. It's Marlon Harewood, West Ham United. It was Route One football. Dean Ashton providing Marlon Harewood with the opportunity, and he dispatched it beyond Bradley Jones. What a great finish. Middlesbrough short on numbers at the back. 
It was route one football by West Ham. The long ball and the flick on. And Southgate just giving him too much room. And Harewood will pick up a yellow card for taking the shirt off in celebration. But he won't care one bit. One touch just opening up the opportunity with Southgate. And Bradley Jones, no chance. What a typically English goal in this most English of occasions. An FA Cup semi-final. We thought it would take an inspirational moment to win it. Marlon Howard had so little room to work with. It was a tight angle. And what a time to produce his 15th goal of the season. Alan Pardew trying to restore some semblance of order, perhaps. Some sense of uh, let's get on with the task at hand. They've done the hard part here. They've engineered a breakthrough. But there's still over 10 minutes to go. Hayden Mullins wanted the game stopping. There was an earlier challenge in the centre of midfield and Mullins went down hurt. And he was waving to his players to stop the play. How pleased he will be that that didn't happen. And Middles were making a quick change. Massimo Macaroni, the Italian striker, is coming on. Steve McLaren knows they need goals. You mentioned earlier, different to a league game. It doesn't matter. The outcome is just the, the result on the day that counts. Middles are now sticking an extra person up front. Macaroni replacing Andrew Taylor. So uh, can the Italian provide uh, some late drama in Middlesbrough and now searching for a rescue axe Macaroni scored the winner in that amazing comeback against Basel in the last round of the UEFA Cup in the 90th minute Middlesbrough 3-0 down at one stage over the two legs then they scored four goals and Macaroni as you say hitting the winner with just seconds remaining and Middlesbrough, I think they'll be going to a 4-3-3 formation now. Oh, it's come for Boateng. The shot uh, well wide of the target. I think the stage is set. You're going to see Middlesbrough now throwing everything they can at the West Ham defence. Ten minutes remain. Wouldn't surprise me if uh, Alan Pardew makes a change just to shore things up and protect this 1-0 lead. Hislop, not for the first time today, losing his footing with the goal kick. Middlesbrough nil, West Ham United one. Marlon Harewood with a booking, but more importantly, with a goal. A booking coming from his celebration. He took the jersey off when he scored the goal. Oh, Macaroni will be lucky to avoid a caution here. He clattered into Etherington. Now the cards are coming out as Mike Riley tries to keep control. It wasn't that bad a challenge. Macaroni, who is still Middlesbrough's record signing, joining from Empoli back in 2002. 8.15 million, I think my memory serves me right. I think it does, Dave. Alan Pardew. There's just uh, eight minutes and stoppage time away from another trip to the Millennium Stadium. He made one last May, but well, that was for a very different occasion. West Ham in the Championship playoff final against Preston North End. And it could be thanks to the number 10, Marlon Harewood's boot. He just wants the full-time whistle to go now, doesn't he? Well, can Middlesbrough possibly do it again in this remarkably long season do they have the depths of reserve well it's a rampaging run and was there a foul it's, it's outside the area right on the edge of the area Middlesbrough wanted inside and there's going to be another card shown but I think you'll see in the replay quite clearly the contact was made just outside the area Hasselbank in full flow and it was the correct decision James Collins across. Yeah. One intention only, and that's to stop Hasselbank. It's 
So, a potent opportunity now for Middlesbrough. Placing the ball very carefully is Frank Quadru. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank also showing intense interest in this one. But will it be the left foot of the Frenchman? It will be. He's got a great left foot on him. Scored against West Ham at Upton Park. Can he repeat the trick at Villa Park? Hislop punching away. Macaroni missing the follow-up. Still has possession. But can't deliver a telling cross. Benayoun to the huge relief of West Ham fans. Able to relieve the pressure for now. Macaroni the target from the throw. Ferdinand's head away. Ray Parler. Helping it on to Southgate. Two veterans aiding Middlesbrough's cause. But the move peters out to nothing. It was a big gamble by Steve McLaren when he paid uh, over £8 million for Massimo Macaroni. Scored a lot of goals in, in Italy. Was very much untried at the top level. It was a gamble they took on a young player, up and coming talent. Many people on T side say it's a gamble that didn't pay off. Well, Dean Ashton has uh, played his last part in the proceedings. It's Bobby Zamora, lifelong West Ham fan, who comes on. It was he who scored that vital winner in the playoff final against Preston in Cardiff. on deck now for the West Ham defence you would feel for the last five minutes again they've been aided by a decision that's gone against Middlesbrough it's a rather forlorn looking figure that Steve McLaren is cutting at the moment I reckon he's got about eight minutes there's going to be two or three minutes added on certainly and yes. I'm sure Middlesbrough fans you can see them their heads down their minds will go back to the 90s when they had Two cup finals. Defeat in both of them. Hislop's come a long way here and he's lost out. Well, was there an infringement given? There was, so it wouldn't have counted from Yakubu as the ball fell for him. Well, I'm not sure that Hislop would have been able to use his hands. It was right at the edge of the area. I'm not sure it was a foul. That's the bank was trying to jump around Danny Gabidon. Yeah, well, maybe looking at that angle, he jumped in towards his lob. Just shows you, took us three replays to get it. The referee just gets one shout at it. Well, I think there's no question that Middlesbrough have missed Mark Viduka this afternoon. Yukubu and Hasselbank haven't quite clinked, have they? No. And they haven't done all season. They've, they score goals individually, and they score them at will. Etherington, driving run. And uh, some ventures for Bradley Jones at the near post. In the end, he's happy to tip it over the top. Some forlorn faces from the Middlesbrough supporters. Move, uh, Locks up some serious air miles in pursuit of their team this season. Hope we're hoping to add Cardiff to their list of destinations. That's looking in some doubt as it stands at the moment. Massimo Macaroni, though. Can't link up with Yakubu. Doesn't work for him on, uh, on side, Massimo Macaroni. It's the only option that Steve McLaren had. The only striker on there. He's going three at the back. You can see him shouting, barking out the instructions now. He wants to go three at the back. He wants to push more bodies forward. Nothing to lose. He might as well lose two. Three nil. Conceding goals at the back, trying to claw the one back that you're behind. Hasselbank giving chase and winning possession. And it's downing on the far post. It's not in it for Yakubu. Missed this kick. Macaroni over the top. 
What an opportunity for an equaliser. All it takes is somebody to be coming in at the right time. For George Botang, it was coming across his body. For Macaroni, it was behind him. The timing just out. And Middlesbrough still trailing by the single goal. Alan Pardew will uh, choose this moment to make his uh, next change. Matthew Everington is going to be replaced by Sean Newton. spent nine years with Charlton Athletic Parler nodding it on for Quadru Middlesbrough need to get the ball forward in a hurry it's exactly what Quadru has done Downing beaten by the intervention of Anton Ferdinand Drew preparing to launch a long missile. Macaroni was jostling for position. Marlon Harewood back to aid the defensive effort. It's a question of how much you want this now. How much do West Ham want to be in that final? And how much do Middlesbrough want to be in that final? The near post flick on. Oh, Yakubu's done well here. Hasselbank scrambling for possession. It won't break for Middlesbrough, though. Desperate defending from West Ham. Proves to be effective. The Kubu and Hasselbank are upping the tempo considerably and uh, they've won another free kick here. As we enter stoppage time, there's going to be five minutes of it. I knew there's a lot to be added. Five added in the first half. Hasselbank had his foot trodden on. It's a free kick. You can see Kadru there on the left with his left foot on the right hand side again. Stuart Downing's decided he's going to take it. Also, left footed player. Well, if ever there was a time for Stuart Downing to break his FA Cup goal scoring duck, this is it. It's asking a lot from uh, this sort of angle. Shaka Hislop has uh, ordered up a five man wall to deal with the threats. Stuart Downing. You've got to get it down. You've got to get it on target. Don't put it on target. You don't stand a chance. It's as simple as that. You better to go hard and low. Could take a deflection off anybody and end up in the back of the net. That's a wasted opportunity. That divine intervention. It's perhaps uh, all that can be hoped for now. For the fans from Teesside. They've given it a real go since conceding the only goal of the game to Marlon Harewood. It's Harewood who's... You'll see a free kick given to West Ham here. Bobby Zamora's in an on, uh, offside position. If uh, Mike Riley thinks that's a free kick, which it doesn't look like he has, maybe lets the challenge go. He could have pulled back the advantage, which wasn't there, but thought it was a fair tackle, so it's Middlesbrough who get the uh, indirect free kick for offside. Time ebbing away for Steve McLaren's men. Just three minutes of it left. It's previously been a happy hunting ground for Middlesbrough Villa Park. Over the years they've uh, come to play Aston Villa and picked up some memorable victories. One led to their first ever Wembley Cup final appearance in... Uh, the now defunct Zenith Data Systems Cup. They beat Villa, Aston Villa 2-1 in the second leg of the semi-final. It is head in hands time, fingernail biting time on both sides. Time has slowed to a crawl if you're wearing claret and blue. And it is simply speeding along if you're wearing red. West Ham with a firm foothold on a European Cup place next season. They just have to keep the ball. That's all they're going to do. Forget about going forward and scoring more goals. Benny Uno is doing just that. 
He's halted in his tracks, retrieved by Zamora, who wants the return pass. He's going to get it. It's the best way to run time down. Keep the ball in your opponent's half. Don't try and score goals. Now Rio Coca. Oh, all along the ground. Wide of the target. Could have finished it there and then. Some desperate baying for the whistles. And this has found Macaroni. A missed hit, miss kick. Nervous moments here for West Ham as Middlesbrough continue to press. Downing's cross, well flighted. Macaroni trying to retrieve the second ball, can't do so. Can hardly describe him as having the heart of a lion, can you, Massimo Macaroni? When you needed a brave player or a player to be brave and put himself into a challenge, was that moment he stepped away from it? It was Gabadon who won the challenge. Still the pressure on, a loose ball, a real opportunity, and wasted! Oh, what a chance it fell to Chris Riggett, the centre-back. He had all the time he needed, and he blasted it wide. It's West Ham's Cup final. That was the defining moment. Like Joe Cole with the opportunity for Chelsea, just 24 hours ago. It fell to Chris Riggett, the middles for player, central defender that he is, and Steve McLaren knows that was the last opportunity. Incredible drama right to the end here in this Cup semi-final. And that does it! Alan Pardew has left, or rather led, West Ham United back to Cardiff for the second consecutive season. This time, it's in a Cup final as they have beaten Middlesbrough courtesy of that strike from Marlon Harewood just 12 minutes from time. And what a clean strike it was too. The celebrations belong to the southern part of England, to London. The home of West Ham United in the championship last season. They win promotion to the Premiership and follow that up in their first season by a mid-table finish and a place in the FA Cup final and more importantly to the club a place in the UEFA Cup next season. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our coverage from Villa Park this afternoon. West Ham emerged victorious by a goal to nil. A distraught Middlesbrough side will have it all to do again on Thursday night against Stour Bucharest. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Don't forget to keep it right here. We've got Spanish football coming up for you with Real Madrid against Malaga. Derek Ray and Tommy Smith standing by to give you all the action from that game. But from Dave Roberts and myself, it's goodbye for now from Villa Park. West Ham against Liverpool will be the cup final.